Hello and welcome! My name is Heather, I'm a registered professional counselor, and today I'm going to be watching Love is Blind Japan Season 1. There were a lot of couples that got engaged this season, so I'm going to use my knowledge and experience as a relationship and breakup counselor to talk about some of the pitfalls in the relationships that led to the breakup, and also some of the things that actually made the relationship work that led to the marriage. So let's dive in. Also, I do apologize if I pronounce any of the names incorrectly. I'm going to do my best to try to pronounce them the proper way. So let's talk about the couples that actually got married, which is Ryotaro and Matami. So they connected really quickly in the pods. They were exchanging letters. She told him that she got divorced and he was understanding of it. And she felt that level of acceptance from him. And they also had that emotional support for each other. And their relationship just grew from that. <laughs> And it's possible that there's a huge stigma around divorce in the Japanese culture. We do see that there was a lot of hesitations from the other contestants who were divorced, you know, just kind of bringing it up and mentioning it and worried about how the other person will handle it or take that information. And we see that she had a hard time accepting his blonde hair. <laughs> 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 Apparently in Japan, having blonde hair or dyed hair is associated with uh, delinquent behavior or it's uh, associated with a delinquent look. I think it was hard for her to get past that, but she did mention over time that it was the inside that counts and he was really sweet, he was really caring. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe. It really helps support my channel. After they moved in together, we see that they get along really well. They love each other. They're very affectionate. <laughs> they were cooking together. We see that just the way that they talk to each other, there's a lot of love and affection there. <laughs> And we see that they're taking care of each other. He's cutting her hair for her and styling it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're able to build on that strong foundation of friendship and they're able to build on and see a future together. <laughs> The only possible issue in their relationship was whether or not her family, particularly her dad, will accept him. She did mention quite a few times that he was very strict and uh, she mentioned that they weren't going to accept his appearance or that they were going to judge him. And so this created a lot of feelings of anxiety and stress onto the relationship. I found that their conversations and the way that they communicated with each other was extremely different from what we've seen in Love is Blind US. One of the things that I noticed was an ongoing theme was something called a soft startup in the conversations. So this is a concept in Gottman's research in terms of how you start a conversation with your partner. And what they found is depending on how you start that conversation, it's actually going to determine how well that conversation is going to go. So is it going to be functional? Is it going to be a clean communication or is it going to be a full-blown argument? And what I found with Love is Blind Japan is that they typically have more of a soft startup, whereas Love is Blind US, there's usually a lot of defensiveness, there's usually a lot of accusatory language, and it's more of a harsh startup, which is why we probably see a lot more blow-ups or a lot of of people storming out or you know just a lot more drama so that's definitely a huge difference I noticed and it could be a cultural difference in terms of how we communicate with each other and what's socially acceptable but they managed to get through it he wanted to show that he was serious about her and the relationship so he actually dyed his hair black <laughs> And that actually shocked the parents and the family because they were expecting him to be blonde. And overall, the meeting went well. There was a level of acceptance. They were able to even joke around at the end, even though the dad wasn't entirely happy or accepting of it. And it's okay that he's not, right? He can He's entitled to his own feelings, but he's still willing to be open and getting to know him, which I think is the most important thing. Well, 
でまあ今回は参加したということですよね。And also having a sense of approval for the family solidified their decision to go ahead and get married. Which couple were you rooting for? Let me know in the comments below. And the last couple is Wataru and Midori. So we see in the pods that they were actually able to connect, but Midori was having a difficult time in the pods with her insecurities. <laughs> This led to Midori trying to convince Wataru in multiple attempts, even creating a business like presentation for him on paper of why she likes him and why they should be together. And this actually convinced him that she was the right one for him, and he decided to propose to her. Now, it's possible that Midori has insecure attachment, and this definitely has led her to that feeling of competition. This has led her to feeling that anxiety because he was dating other people and she wasn't too sure if he actually liked her. It did help their relationship because she was able to fight for him and it worked. We do see those insecurities come up when she doubts that she deserves him. And this may lead her to self sabotage and to find flaws in the relationship. Throughout the episode, she does mention that she's not physically attracted to him. But because he was so in love with her, he was willing to work on his appearance and to also show her that he's committed to her and the relationship. And we see that he continues to show care and love. And affection, and this can definitely help someone, especially if they're insecurely attached. However, they can't just rely on their partner to be able to get that reassurance, they also need to do the deeper work. He also wants to show her that he does love her and that he's committed to her by proposing to her again, but in person. And we see that she's still hesitant and that she's not quite sure if she's committed to him. Again, I think it's more so that she's grappling with her own securities around whether or not she deserves a person like him. But she does say yes because she wants to work on the relationship. And I think she also needs time to really feel that she deserves this. Something else that really helped solidify the relationship is the conversation that she had with her mom. So she gave some really great advice. And I think because of this reality check, she was able to really understand and accept the relationship and also understand that she deserves to be in a relationship with someone as loving as Wataru. I think the conversation with her mom is ultimately what led to the marriage. I think that if her mom wasn't there to say these things, she probably wouldn't have gone through with the wedding. This was a huge turning point in her really being fully committed to the relationship. <laughs> Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more analysis videos like this. Feel free to check out my other therapist reviews videos and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, be kind and love yourself.